I decided to build a late night talk show set in my garage. Not exactly sure why, but I run all the cameras and do everything myself and, and just hope that nothing goes wrong. This is 10 Minutes With. Hi, welcome to the show. My name is Brian Kelsey. This, is, of course, as always, is Pete Chifo. Pete, I am so excited. I'm always excited for shows, but uh, we have a guest today that you and I have been talking about for a long time. He's outside in the cold right now, so we've got to hurry up and, and bring him in. My guest today is a Grammy-nominated multiple Juno Award winner who sold over 20 million records worldwide. Take a look. Singer-songwriter Gino Vanelli. Legendary pop star and crossover artist. Gino Vanelli. Brother to brother. Now we must join our hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gino Vanelli. There he is. Okay. This is a real. Can I get you a refreshment? Yes. Would you like yes. some oh, fresh okay. coffee? Um, how you doing? I'm very well. <laughs> you actually. had a show last night. Yes. Yes. Um, and I know we're gonna make this quick. Your your brother Ross is here. Um, you guys got to go. You're going to Erie, Pennsylvania. Erie. Yeah. And then to Mexico. And that's it for, for the fall. Yeah. So I, I, I'll get right to it. How what how is touring different now, versus in the seventies? Well, you know, the, the thing that's gained is the experience and, and the knowing what to do and knowing the pitfalls. Whereas, you know, when you're younger, you just kind of plow through it, you know, and you, and you make up for your mistakes with, with, with youth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and as you get older, you know, you realize certain things don't work. So you really need to be a little more meticulous about your time, your energies, mm -hmm. what you do, your shows, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So in a way, things get tighter. Uh, because, you know, um, I really want to preserve myself to do this for a while longer. Yeah. So it, it, it makes for a little bit of devohood, a little bit, you yeah. know, here yeah. and there. Yeah. Not that I really mean to be, but I got to be. <laughs> well, you, you know, it's a, it's, a di it's a different time in your life, too. I mean, well, you know, like, don't interrupt me at this time because I'm doing my meditation I, and I'm doing this. And, and that probably wasn't <laughs> this, the case in 1978, you know. No, it's like, who's going to knock on my door next? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know. Just gotta do this. You know, I built this desk oh, okay. myself. You know. Okay, you're like my mom now. <laughs> of course. Speaking of your mom, I want to talk about actually your family because, yeah. um, you know, you come from a, a musical background. And yeah. Your um, obviously your your brothers and your father. You know, how does it affect you becoming a musician? When I'm three years old and I'm looking at my dad sing on stage in a club in Quebec City, at a club called La Part Saint Jean. And it really gets, goes deeply into your psyche as, as far as the, the, the romance of it and, and this, the way out of the mundanity of the, the mundanities of the world. And, and then as I'm four, five, six, seven, my father brings home all these great records, Latin American records, operatic records, orchestral records, jazz, big band, uh, you name it. And uh, so we had an incredible uh, ear training. And so I got my best training from the ages of six to ten, listening intently. It's cold. I know there's there's no heat in here, so I appreciate it. No, so we're going to keep I'm moving fine. along. It's and Connecticut. <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to skip ahead. So I, you just have to tell my favorite story, though. One of my favorite in, in, in music, because um, it's something that really probably wouldn't happen today, and that's how uh, it's the Herb Alpert story. I was signed to RCA Records when I was 17 and a half, just out of high school. Mm -hmm. Had a mild hit, a Canadian hit, and I got a taste of, of what minor success at least was. But I also knew in 1970, 71, Canada wasn't really ready to make great records. Mm -hmm. Not until the 80s, till Celine Dion and Brian Adams and the likes, you know, would really elevate production and the whole thing. So I decided I was going to ask for my release and, and move to New York. Of course, mm -hmm. my mother wasn't here, so I moved to New York. I got on a Greyhound bus. And uh, I got to New York with about, you know, uh, maybe two nights booked at a hotel, a really lousy hotel, and 50 bucks in my pocket. That's all I had. Mm -hmm. My father couldn't give me any more. <clears throat> 
One thing I discovered, and this is kind of on-the-job training, that the universe works in a very, very mysterious way, that when you're on the right path, doors open. And, um, and sometimes you need to knock on a few to find the right door, but the doors will be there. And so I ran out of money very, very quickly. So suddenly I, I think I don't know what I'm going to do, and I got my guitar, and someone says to me, you play guitar? I, I do. Uh, and what are you into? Da, da, da. Anyways, it turned out to be a guy who was a producer at RCA. So he's come and audition for me and loved so what I was doing. Long and the short of it, I spent almost the first eight months in New York, just in New York. Wow. Went home just for a week, went back for another nine it's months. Great experience. It was a fantastic experience. By by the by the second half I was offered three record deals. And I was I was kind of uh, a little bit stupid. I was a little bit foolish. I, I didn't think they were good enough. So I went back home a little disheartened with, with the whole matter. I put a group together. My brother and I, mm -hmm. brothers and I, stay, saved about four grand. We built a little studio. Wow. So we made some demos, mm -hmm. saved some money, and we went to Los Angeles for four months. And so for four months, we knocked on all the doors. And I was wondering why my universal concept wasn't working. It wasn't working. <laughs> this is supposed to, everything's supposed to. Yes. Where is the damn door? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we were staying in a place that was uh, $5 a day, and uh, right on uh, Sunset Boulevard. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, we had $5 left, and Joe said, we need to go home. And I said, Joe, I'm not going home. Joe says, well, you're going to have to panhandle because we're out of $5. He says, and that's, and mom sent the money to Hollywood, Florida. She says, oh, we're out of money. Right. That's right, yeah. yeah. Wrong Hollywood. Yeah, she sent 35 Classic bucks. Mom. Yeah, it just, just, just got there somehow. So Joe said, you know, we're screwed. So uh, it's time to go home. Time to go money. home. Okay, so I get up about 5.30, can't sleep. And I was saying to myself, where's the door? Where's the door? So I started walking on Sunset Boulevard. It was still dark. And I noticed the church, Episcopalian church. And I, um, to, my, to my astonishment, the, the doors were unlocked. Hmm. So I walked in. And I looked, I looked around me and I said, I'm really tired. So I just fell asleep. So I, I woke up at 10 o'clock. And I said, oh, dear, I see the door. And so I went back to the I went back to the room. I said, Joe, get up, get up. I says, I know what we gotta do. Mm -hmm. Where are we going? I said, Don't ask questions. I took my guitar. We we went to the Charlie Chaplin Studios where AM Records was at the time. Mm -hmm. Big gates, yep. big tower, a garden and a tower. So I just I I'm all operating only by what I saw mm -hmm. in that twilight sleep. Mm -hmm. And so I lay my guitar down. The guard, guard comes down and says, you know this is private property. You can't go in there. I said, I know, but this is public property. I said, I'm allowed to stay here. I'm waiting for a friend. Okay, just make sure you don't go through it. And this you later found his name is Johnny. Johnny kept eyeing me. Finally, two, three hours passed by, and I see Herb Alpert walking across the parking lot through the gates. And I said, that's it. That's the door. And so I lay my guitar down, and I ran through the gates. And the now guards, Johnny, well, Johnny, with a gun. Johnny says, son of a bitch, I knew you'd do that. I heard him screaming. So he gets down, climbs down you know, the, the guard tower, and unholsters his gun. Because it turns out that Herb's wife, Lonnie Hall, had nearly been kidnapped just a month before. You were like he didn't shoot you on the spot. Well, today they would. Yeah, I, that was like, that's why... It, it, there's a lot that's different that I that's was one kind of, of expecting, maybe, to be, you know. But if you did get signed a little gunshot wound. Well, maybe. You know, I mean, yeah, maybe I could sing with a gunshot wound, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I get to Herb and I grab his arm, and uh, Herb turns white as ghost. And, um, and John, just as I grab Herb, Johnny finally grabs me. He had a bit of a limp, so he was a little slow, but he grabbed oh, my a good, arm. That's a quality one in a, in a guard. Yes. You. So he kept, he started to drag me away. Yeah. And I just gave Herb one last look, and I went like this, you know. And Herb just went, wait a minute, Johnny. And he summoned me. He s Herb just said, come here. And uh, I was this close to him, and he said, what do you want? I said, um, I want you to hear what I got. I, I, I think you'll like, you know, what I got, got to offer musically. He took the longest pause in the world. He said, okay, come back in 30 minutes. And Johnny's there nodding his head, you son of a bitch. Because I made him look bad, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
So he wrote me out a little pass, and um, 30 minutes later, I came back, and I had my guitar, and I played People Gotta Move, Crazy Life, Mama Coco. I mean, some songs that people know. Mm -hmm. And Herb just had his forehead on, on the desk and just lifted up his head, and he just looked at me and said, Welcome to the family. That's crazy. <laughs> and I recorded seven records, so, you wow. know. So what I'm saying is there's always things that happen, mm -hmm. but if you're always looking for the door. Mm -hmm. See, there's always is, a door. That couldn't be a better ending to this interview because I, you guys I know have to go, um, and uh, I, I just, I really appreciate you coming by. My Thanks pleasure, so man. much. Yeah. Gino Vanelli, everybody. And uh, we'll see you on tour throughout the All year. Right. Go to GinoV.com for more. Thanks so much, man. All right. Appreciate bro. it. Okay. Watch uh, the... Uh, yeah. You can walk right up there. Just, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. This has been a Brian Kelsey movie. <laughs>